Hi, my name is Vince and I'm from Surfrider. I'm going to be showing you how to water sample at the Agate Beach site. Um, we start off at the Lucky Gap Trail and the best way to find it is to find this sign. It's on Highway 101 directly across from the uh, Aussie Surf Shop and the Miller Paint Shop. Hopefully they're still there around. They're staples so they should be. Um, Lucky Gap Trail, it's a paved trail down to the beach which we'll be taking in just a second to get down there and access the point. Sort of a good spot to prepare your stick. If you have to do any stick preparations, maybe take the air temperature. Um, I just tech, we've been outside here for a little bit, and so I'm looking at the thermometer. I've actually got two of them that I'm trying out just to see which one I like better, and they're both reading about 48 degrees. So I'm going to write the air temp down as 48. And then also. Now's a good time to prep your, if you haven't written on your sample, either the jar or the bag, you definitely want to do that before you get it wet. It makes it a lot easier, it makes it stick better. So I am going to write on my jar, Agate Beach, AB. Which is the designation of the site. Um, this time I just kind of loosen the lid a little bit. I don't actually take it off until I get all the way down there. And the way that this is a brand new rig that I just started using, it does both the jars and the bags, depending upon what we've got in stock at the time. Sometimes we, lo we run low on the jars. Essentially, you do the bang like that. Of course, you do one or the other, you don't do both. Um, and then similarly with the bag, I won't take off that zip tie or the, the top portion until I'm down at the beach. But today we're going to be using a jar, uh, so I will not be having that on at all. all right. uh, some of the other things about the site that I want to point out, there is a stream that you will have to cross. Um, it changes depth. Typically you can get away with over the calf boots in the winter time after a big heavy rain sometimes that isn't even enough. And so you see that what I'm wearing is full on uh, chest waders. I picked them up at Bymark for like $55. Um, I recommend them uh, if you ever get into the surf conditions especially in the winter when surge sometimes comes in it can inundate you. You just don't have to worry as much about getting water in your boots and your pants wet if you've got a pair of these. Uh, but do understand that it is a cost. So. Alright, well, uh, the sample point, we're standing on the stairs leading directly out onto the beach and the sample point is directly out straight in front of these stairs. So if you haven't already taken off your uh, jar lid, you can do so now. Um, okay there. Um, you kind of want to approach the surf and let it come to you. One of the advantages of being in something like this is you don't have to do that quite as cautiously. And so if you see me go a little bit deeper than you might go, that's fine. Um, I do recommend people get a sense for how far up the water's coming, especially wait for a few minutes because it can be way down there. You start walking down towards the next thing you know, it all comes in on you, uh, which is another reason why I like this, this type of wear. 
Um, so I'm going to start walking down and gauge kind of as I'm walking down just how it's coming in and if I feel it's coming in back to me then I'll brought back up a little bit. But essentially I try and get the stick buried at least up to here for a few minutes let the water temperature stabilize then I dip my or then I uh, actually will remove the sample and put the lid back on. Um, typically just wait until I get back up to the beach and put the lid back on. Let's do that. So I kind of let the stick in a little bit longer than I normally do. I was just trying out to see the two different thermometers, how quick they read. They both read 50 degrees after about a minute of being in the water. I'm going to make certain that your sample has as little sand as possible. This has just a little bit of sand that's fine towards the bottom. And then I usually wait to get back up under the beach to get my lid, put it back on just so that in case I drop my lid, it doesn't end up in the ocean and me without a lid. the um, water temperature as well because I can't remember things very well and then I take this data back to me and when I drop off the sample at the lab that's when I actually do my data sheet I find that using this little pad and pen combination to be a lot more convenient than wrestling with a pad especially when it's raining out and your sheet gets completely mucked up and wet and you can't read it anymore so I transfer the data basically just water temperature air temperature 